Okay, so we're still having problems with uh, tracing the wires in our car. And here's a neat little device that I happen to have at the moment. It is a circuit tracer and uh, it's composed of a thing that generates RF signals here. And it, you're supposed to use it with the wall. It's got stuff so you can plug it into the wall. Okay, it's got a wall plug and you can send RF signals through your through your walls. And uh, then you have a little thing to detect it here. And uh, But it, it should work, I think, with our automotive wiring. I'm a little bit concerned. I'm not sure what kind of voltages this thing puts out, so I'll probably try to probably try to uh, disconnect the uh, the cables before I uh, the cables to the um, <coughs> to the ECU because I don't want to burn it out. It's a little bit questionable putting a lot of RF power into your uh, car computer. Okay, so this has a couple outputs here, and one of them says this one says ground on this side. So we'll hook it up to the RF side, and we'll turn that baby on. See, it's got a green light for power, and let's turn this guy on. It's got a little button down here, a little screen that lights up. And uh, yeah, I don't know if you can see that. Let me try to refocus. Okay, so here we are. We got our screen, and if we move it in here, see it's it's sensing that there's a wire there, and it's got a little power meter. And that power meter goes up as we get closer to the wire. See that? It goes up, 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 and so hopefully we can use this. Move it away, see it goes almost down to zero. And move it up and see how the bars go up as we get close to the wire. So hopefully we can use that in our car to uh, trace out where the wires are. See that? So this looks like a neat little device. It's similar to what we're doing with the, with the uh, cheap way earlier, but hopefully this will be more uh, sensitive. Okay, so let's take it out and try it. Okay, so I wanted to test this thing on my oscilloscope. Try it on the little ones, and I think it was out of bandwidth. Looks like it's about 15 kilohertz square wave that they're using for this guy, uh, and it's about 84 volts. So 84 volts is enough to kill your computer in your car if you hook it to ground. And maybe if I unhook all the cables, and hopefully I get them all, and don't hook up the ground, that will still be able to see the signal and not blow out the components in the car. So this seems like a risky thing to do. If you want to do this with your own car, you do it at your own risk because there's a good chance you might wreck something. Okay. Okay, I'm thinking about trying to uh, troubleshoot the wires with that uh, professional RF uh, uh, wire tracer. And I found out from testing it on my oscope that it's a uh, pretty high voltage, it's about 84 volts. And I'm pretty sure that will wreck any computers that it might be plugged into. So I went through and I disconnected every single cable I could find on my harness. Every single one, every single plug. There's plugs here, plugs here. Oh, before I did that, remember it's very, care very important to turn the switch off and uh, make sure there's no voltage on this because this goes up to like several hundred volts and it will kill you if you touch that, okay? And I have in my other videos how to disassemble this, this back part. And uh, also I'm worried about maybe damaging the sensors up in the front part if they're subjected to that high a voltage. So I went through and there is lots and lots of sensors and I unplugged them all. Tried to, there's one there, one there, a few there, some down under here. And I went through, and then, of course there's that fuel gauge sensor right there, and uh, of course our oxygen sensor, which we're going to be testing. So I have that one unplugged down there, it's hard to see from here. 
and uh, I will do another once around over to make sure that I have everything disconnected because I don't want to damage my oh, oh here's another one over here I probably should disconnect this one as well so I want to make sure everything's disconnected so that I don't damage something okay okay so now we have our signal generator out here and uh, I have the clip lead hooked up to the uh, the harness cable and not not the sensor but the harness cable and it's the pin right to the uh, on the left hand side of the uh, the power cord or the, where the 12 volts is the two bottom ones are are the uh, heater sensor and then there's one that hooks to 12 volts and the other is the sensor pin and I put a little clip lead on the end of this cable going to this th side and we'll try to hook these guys together I clip them up and uh, see if hopefully I don't blow out something in here and we got our sensor here and it is sensing the RF on that cable let's let's go over to the rest of the harness and see if we can okay so it looks like we're getting signals signals down here uh, see this is where I would think that the signal would go into the back but it's pretty low actually there's there seems to be a little bit of a signal there it's pretty low over here okay seems to be higher here it's pretty high right over here and oh what happened so our signal seems to drop we go see we go over here the signals higher and it seems to drop as we go along the cable and uh, it's really low right over there almost zero and let's go in the back and I'm not really seeing any signal at all back here breaker mode let's go back up in the front and make sure it's still measuring okay, go back up to the front and oh yeah yeah we're getting a high signal see this is where the cable was close to the catalytic converter so maybe maybe I should open this cable bundle up and see if see if the wires broke because it looks like the signal drops drastically as I go past that point see the signals almost nothing there and I go up here and it's pretty high so right in this area the signal's dropping a lot and that's 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 where the cable bundle looks like it's been damaged due to the heat so maybe we'll take that thing apart and uh, check it to see if there's a broken wire in there okay I think I'll turn this thing off so I'm not frying anything okay so here is here's the wire harness that I suspect it has a problem look here the wires are actually I don't know if you can see that they are showing through there let's take a closer look okay so with our RF troubleshooting and also this visual inspection how the cables melted here I don't know if you can see that does not look good uh, I suspect that probably the broken, there's a broken wire somewhere in this area of the harness and so what I'm going to do is try to see there's like a slit in the harness I'll be careful not to cut the wires underneath but cut the electrical tape that's kind of holding this thing together well the mine's got electrical tape I don't know what the new ones have and so we'll try to kind of get in here so we can take a look at these wires and hopefully inspect them to see if they're broken or not okay so what I did is I kind of cut the electrical tape on the bottom and opened it up 
and there is like literally hundreds of wires in here. Okay, so now we can get access to the wires. Now if the wire is broken, we're, we may not see it on the outside because the rubber part is probably going to still be in contact. But the metal part in the bottom and the inside can, could still be uh, broken. And so the best way to do that is to, to see if it's broken, is to use a volt ohm meter. And we happen to have one here. And we'll put it on ohms. So you can. Okay, so we touch the leads together and it makes a beeping sound, okay? Okay, so what we're gonna do, we got our handy dandy clip leads here, which are so great for everything, and we will hook them up to the probes of the uh, voltmeter. Actually, this one's crap. Gotta get a new clip lead. Okay, so here's a neat little trick. So I have my voltmeter, let's get rid of this thing, hooked up to two pins. Okay? You can hear it beeping when I touch the pins together. So the idea here is you're going to take these pins and puncture them right through the... Because when you have those wires over there, you can't tell whether they're continuous or not, but if you stick pins through them, it'll make contact with the interior part of the wire without having to wreck the wire and we can probe them to see if it, it's uh, broken or not. So let's give that a shot. Okay, so I have my voltmeter and I've got my my pins here and I, I don't expect I'm going to find the short right away. I'm just going to do this as an example to show see we have a wire here. We'll punch the pin through this wire and then I'm going to do it real close right next to it just to demonstrate that you can measure the conductivity punch it through maybe I'll take the pins out of these things to punch them through because they're getting kind of difficult okay also uh, here we got our pins in there and also I have a one of these things, a thimble. This uh, helps you from getting stabbed. This thimble will help you from getting stabbed if you put it behind the wires here while you're pushing the pins through so you can hold the wires in place. And I finally got two pins through the wire and we'll see if we measure continuity through that. Okay, so we'll take our leads here and we'll just touch them to these pins. Okay, so we'll touch this to the other one. Get them both in there. And there we are. So you can test inside the wires to see if they're broken. Now like I said, I tested over a very short distance, so I suspect it probably wouldn't be broken right in that area. So we can start looking through those wires, or maybe a better bet, you might want to try to figure out which wire we suspect is the problem. Or we could test back to the sensor at this point. Clip one end of the clip lead to the sensor wire that we suspect is bad. And then try to just probe one end with the uh, the pins at this, this side. See if we can find where that sensor cooks up. And uh, see if there's a break in the wire then. Okay. Okay. Okay, so I was looking at the wire on the uh, um, the sensor that we're interested in, and it's black with a yellow stripe, just like this one. And actually, there's two of them in there. And I was just testing them a second ago, and one of them maybe it was this one here. I punch it through. Okay, there, hear that? So it sounds like we're getting continuity up to here. So this is the wire, so it does have the same colors on it. And that wire, when I touch it with the with the pin, when I punch, punch through the uh, insulation with this, 
makes the beeping sound. So maybe we can test it all the way. Looks like that wire harness goes into the back. Maybe I'll go into the back and try to find that, that same wire and see if I can test it all the way back there and make sure it's uh, uh, making continuity all the way to the back. Okay. Actually, now that I look at it a little bit closer, the wire, the wire that I'm interested in is this one right here, down here. And it's actually, I think it's black with a white stripe. Uh, right there. So, okay, so maybe I was looking for the wrong wire. Black with a white stripe. It's hard to tell when all the wires are bunched together, but this one looks a little bit different than the other one. The other one's a black with a yellow stripe. This one looks like a black with a white stripe there. And that's the one that's making continuity with the uh, uh, catalytic converter sensor. Okay, so we're still troubleshooting the uh, problem with the catalytic converter. And I have the catalytic converter unplugged, and I have some clip links plugged into the sensor. This is the sensor plug. This, this camera right down there, I guess. So it's plugged into the sensor plug. Okay, it's a sensor pan, and our clip lead is coming out, and I hooked it to a long red wire, so I can run it in, and I finally found out where the ECU is. I unplugged the ECU and set it up on the seat, and here's all the cables that come to it, and if we look down here on the blue plug, here is our black wire with the white stripe that we've been looking all over for. And so we have our voltmeter set here on ohms and to beep. Let's, let's put it down there. And so if we we can probe from the back of these plugs also. And there we go. So it looks like that wire was continuous. So let's go ahead and we'll just plug probe the other other wires the sensor and make sure that they make contact all the way back here. We'll eliminate that particular issue. So I guess maybe with the uh, RF troubleshooting that we're doing, it turns out that the waves usually get smaller if uh, the cable isn't infinitely long. They get smaller toward the end of it, so maybe we're just detecting the end of the cable. That's why the waves are going down. So anyway, that's kind of disappointing. Looks like there was not a break in that line after all. Okay. Anyway, this is Dr. Janes, and thanks for watching. Okay, so now I have it hooked up. We've verified the one hooks to the battery. The one sensor, the uh, sensor output, goes to this blue plug. And I hooked it up to one of the uh, heater uh, uh, connectors, and uh, found that the heater connector does make contact to here. I did hook it up to the other other part of that heater. I'll have to see, look at the wire, see if I can find some more information on the wiring diagrams, but uh, it was not making any connections to any of these plugs. So maybe it goes to ground or something. I have to verify that. So if that's the case, then maybe all the wires are intact, but I've got to make sure about the last one still got the sensor and one of the heater ones and one hooked to the battery verified. So there's one more prong to verify. Okay. Okay, so I reconnected um, up to the last pin the other oh. let's see if we can refocus. Oh, I guess that's pretty good. And uh, the last, this is a heater pin for the Catalyte converter, and okay, so right there, there's the other pin. So it looks like all the pins. That was the one pin for the heater. And of course, the other one was this black wire. I didn't do it from the front, but it's kind of over down in this corner over here. And so it looks like all the wires are making connections, but for some reason we're still getting the catalytic converter error. So time to move on. 
to the next phase. Okay. Anyway, so here's the most reliable way to troubleshoot the cable using a full ohm meter and wires connected from one point to the other. Although I do think the RF thing is, is helpful if you have no idea where the wires are going. It'll kindly tell you where whether that cable that's got the signal on it is uh, uh, in that cable, you know, section of uh, harness that you're you're tracking or not. But I think when you get close to the ends, the uh, RF diminishes, and so the signal goes down, just because of uh, transmission line theory, the way that RF behaves at the end of the cable, it can't have a big wave up there because it's terminated. So can be helpful, but. Uh, troubleshooting with the volt ohm meter is probably the most accurate way of doing it. Okay, so this is Dr. James, and thanks for watching. Okay, and here's the Green Line Circuit Seeker uh, CS8000, and this is really made for cir seeking circuits in your house. So I'd, again, I'd recommend uh, uh, unplugging all the cables in your your car because this puts out kind of high voltage, and it could wreck something. It's plugged in. And uh, we will uh, hook this guy up again now that we found the ECU and uh, see how it behaves at the end of the cable. Okay, so we have our signal generator for the green line hooked up to uh, the, uh, ca the uh, harness cable of our car, the input to the uh, uh, oxygen sensor. And here we have our signal detector. And uh, see, it looks kind of like this guy right here. Got a little screen. If we bring it up here, it measures a very large signal. Okay. Okay, there. So there, it's more in focus. Now we're measuring a large signal, and we're kind of tracing the thing through the cable before. As I mentioned, you know, household, you can still see a signal there, but it's dropping down. That's why I thought maybe there's a break. In the I think it's probably transmission line effects because household cables are very long. They're basically infinite in length. And uh, transmission lines, when you use RF, behave very differently uh, toward the end of the cable, depending on how they're terminated. And so here we found the actual end of it. And. I think it's because it's transmission line effects, the, the wave can't travel past the end of the cable, so it kind of, due to the end effects, it kind of dies down, so it's not really finding the end of it too well using this method, unfortunately. I'm probing all around here, and I'm not really seeing a signal, even though I know for sure that the signal is terminated there. So what happens toward the end of a transmission line is it becomes less current and more voltage, and maybe this thing is having troubles picking that up. So, because there's our plugs, see? And I'm not really seeing a signal on this cable, even though I'm sure, I'm sure the signal's coming up to there. So anyway, I guess uh, the RF uh, detection of, of uh, troubleshooting cables is limited because the the uh, the harness cables in your car are kind of short. So anyway, that's unfortunate, but we did find out what we wanted to know using our techniques. And uh, this is Dr. Janes, and thanks for watching.